my forever blowing bubble Pretty bubbles in the air Hello poker players, this is Steve Subrady again. This time I will show you how to predict when the bubble will arrive in a World Series bracelet event. In fact, this method works just as well for nearly any No Limit Hold'em tournament with a 15% caching structure. But we can also use it for uh, events with only 12% caching structures by simple extrapolation. My solution, which I call the T4 time, is very simple to use. We need only to inspect a tournament structure sheet and perform a bit of simple arithmetic. I hope you will find the method useful. Knowing when the bubble will arrive can be an extremely important factor in our ability to cash. We might then know that we can fold to the money, or we might know that we don't have enough chips to do that, so we must take some extra risks in order to build up our stack. For example, we might have a 15 big blind stack with 90 minutes to the bubble, and we conclude that our stack is too small to fold to the money. So we begin looking for the best spots to win a pot or two. Even winning a, the blinds and annies can give us an extra orbit of play, which is sometimes all we need to cash. Or we could have that same 15 big blind stack with only 30 minutes to the bubble. Perhaps that's just two orbits and five big blinds. Now we can play very tightly until the bubble bursts, and I mean very tightly. Regardless of which strategies we employ in these situations, it's critical to know the bubble when the bubble will arrive. I will show you a very simple method for predicting the bubble. I call this the T4 time, which is the time it takes for a theoretical starting stack to become a four big blind stack. Actually, I use the T4 time to predict when the tournament enters hand-for-hand -hand play, rather than when the bubble will actually burst. This is when we arrive at the bubble. This is a relatively reliable prediction, since the hand-for-hand -hand point usually creates a paused clock. And the bubble can take anywhere from zero hands to an hour or more of paused clock hands. But once we are in the hand-for-hand -hand stage, we can usually construct a solid strategy for playing to the money. So, how did I create my T4 bubble prediction method? I'm not going to go into any gory math detail here, uh, but basically I observed a large number of tournaments to see how fast they reached the hand-for-hand -hand stage. I tried various schemes before, set, before uh, settling on my T4 method, and then I checked to see how accurate it was. I did this using two techniques. For WSOP bracelet events, I used poker news reports to find the ha the hand for hand time for each tournament. This has some drawbacks though. For example, sometimes it reports the hand for hand or bubble busting times a tad late or not at all. And sometimes it can be difficult to determine the blind level um, at the reported time. My second method is to screen record the Bravo clock on my computer as a tournament is played. Then I play back the recording to find out when the clock was paused. This generally produces a very accurate answer, but not all tournament directors are diligent about getting this right. Finally, the T4 time is designed to predict when the clock is paused for hand, to hand, hand, for hand play in the tournament. It predicts when we reach the bubble. It assumes the event play, pays the top 15% of the field like all live WSOP events do. A tournament that pays a smaller percentage of the field will take longer to reach the bubble usually. Let's look at some examples of how we can find the hand for hand time for a tournament. This is the Bravo clock I recorded for the spring 2020 WSOP event number eight. This is early in the event, but we just fast forward through the recording until we reach the hand for hand paused clock time. We can do this for other clocks also. For example, this is a clock from the 2020 WSPC Tournament Number 4 event, which you can find by using the Poker Atlas website. We can also use these clocks when we want to play a local, uh, in a local daily tournament, especially one that pays less than 15% of the field. For example, we can record the clock for a Wednesday running of our tournament to find its, uh, its bubble arrival time. Then we can use this time for the next day's event since a tournament with the same structure will arrive at the bubble in about the same amount of time. My primary method for analyzing the World Series of Poker bracelet events is to study 
Poker News Historical Reports, such as this report from event number 11 of the 2023 World Series. This shows that the event went hand for hand at 9.43 p.m. If we scroll down the page a bit, we can find additional information. For example, level 17 began at 8.41 p.m. and there was an unscheduled break at 8.57 p.m. We can use this kind of information to, do, to determine that the hand-for-hand -hand elapsed tournament time was about 8.3 hours for this event. This was quite close to the predicted time of 7.9 hours. Before we move on to our bubble prediction method, it's interesting to note just how fast players bust out of a tournament. This is a, is a plot of the elapsed time for one of the win events shown on the vertical axis versus the remaining fraction of players in the tournament shown on the horizontal axis. For example, the elapsed time after 12 30 minute levels would be six hours. When we fit a mathematical curve to this data, we find that a power curve fits the data quite well, especially in the 8% to 20% region. I have done this for many tournaments and I get the similar result, similar curve for each tournament. This curve is nearly a straight line when we are near the bubble, which was 12% for this event. In this region, the, best, the bust out rate was about 1% of the number of entrants every 10 minutes. That's the slope of the red line. This can be very useful near the bubble. We simply look at the clock once the number of entrants is finalized, let's say 1,000 entrants. Then we take 1% of that number, which would be 10 entrants every 10 minutes. We would then expect about one player to bust out per minute when we are nearing the bubble. So if the dealing rate is 30 hands per hour, we expect about two bust outs per hand. We can use this rule of thumb to get a rough idea of how long the bubble should take to arrive and compare it to our T4 prediction. Of course, when we are near the hand for hand pause stage, uh, this bust out rate usually slows down, but this rule of thumb is still quite useful. Let's move on to our bubble prediction method. The best way to describe this method is with an example. Suppose we want to predict the hand for hand time for the 2024 WSOP $500 kickoff event. First, we obtain the structure sheet, which is shown here. Then we find the number of starting chips for this event, which is 25,000 chips. Then we divide the starting stack by four, which gives us 6,250 chips. This is where the T4 name comes from. It's just the time it takes a starting stack to become four big blinds. Next, we find the level where the big blind drops to this number of chips, which is level 17 for this event. With 30 minute levels, it takes eight hours to finish the first 16 levels. So our T4 time would be 8.0 hours. We can refine this further if we want to. We could argue that the four big blind requirement is almost satisfied at the beginning of level 16, which would be a T4 time of 7.5 hours. By extrapolating, we can estimate that a more precise T4 time is about 7.6 hours for this event. That's it. We can do it in just a few minutes. We could even do it on the fly when we are playing. Suppose we started with 25,000 chips like this tournament and the big blind is now 5,000 chips. We know that the bubble is getting close. There is one caveat, however. The T4 time is the time it takes to reach the bubble in a tournament with 15% caching structures. Caching will take a little longer if only 12% of the field is paid. So we can guess that the tournament like uh, that would be about 20% longer to cash. Let's see how well our T4 prediction method worked for the 2023 WSOP bracelet events with 30 minute levels, which is summarized in this table. For example, the T4 time for event number three, the Mystery Millions was predicted to be 8.0 hours. And the actual time for the hand for hand time was 8.3 hours. So our prediction was off by only 4%. Overall, the actual T4 times are quite close to the predicted times, averaging about 6% too high for 30 minute level events. We can also see that the predicted T4 times are very similar for all of these events, ranging from 7.0 hours to 9.1 hours. The closer event is only slightly better than the, and then the gladiator event 
even though it cost five times more to enter. Cheaper events often provide more bang for the buck than the expensive events. It's also interesting to note that the so-called deep stack events don't provide much more play than the standard events. You might notice that the deep stack events often give you more chips, but then adjust the structure so that the play is often not much better. Notice that the $600 ultra stack event with 60,000 chips has nearly the same T4 time as a $600 deep stack event with only 30,000 chips. It's mostly just marketing, so be aware. We can compare the actual hand-for-hand -hand time to the predicted T4 time for the last three years of the WSOP No Limit Hold'em bracelet events, which is shown on this plot. The conclusion is clear. The T4 time does a good job of predicting bubble arrival, but there is some error. For example, the 20-minute turbo events take about 20% longer to reach the bubble than predicted. This structure is so fast that many players seem to hold on tightly near the, near the bubble, extending it uh, its arrival. Also, late entries can be much closer to the bubble in hours than it is for slower events. Notice that these events all cluster around the same line, so it appears that this delay of bubble arrival for turbo events is a real effect. The 30-minute events arrive at the bubble about 6% slower than predicted, and the 40-minute events are nearly dead on to the prediction but the 60-minute events arrive at the bubble about 6% more quickly than predicted. We can also see that the T4 time works well for a local tournament, shown here. But we must be careful to remember that many local tournaments pay a smaller percentage of the field than the WSOP does. The 10 a.m. South Point tournament, shown here, often pays about 15% of the field, and so it closely matches the WSOP uh, 20 minute events on this graph. We can see from the previous slide that the T4 time is not a perfect predictor of bubble arrival time. For example, we saw that it depends slightly on the level time. This might be the result of psychological pressure that the escalating blinds have on our play, or it could be some other influence. But it does seem to be a fundamental force of no limit hold'em tournament play. We might think that the uh, reentry rules might impact the, the bubble time, freeze outs versus unlimited reentries, for example. But when I look at this closely, there does not seem to be any correlation there. We might also suspect that the size of the entry fee might have an impact. Perhaps those who play in the more expensive tournaments are better players and play differently. But once again, there doesn't appear to be any correlation here, as you can see uh, in that plot. How about our age? The average T4 time for senior and super senior uh, one hour events is 0.96 compared to a slightly faster 0.93 for non-senior events. Age is apparently not a significant factor here. One factor that does matter is the number of players per table. As we can see from this plot, the six, uh, six max events reach the bubble faster than nine max events. This should be um, no surprise since the dealing rate will, have, uh, will be faster in a short-handed event, and we have to post the blinds more often in a short-handed event. So the bubble arrival time should be faster. Next, it doesn't seem that the presence of bounties makes much difference uh, to the speed of the tournament, though that conclusion is based on just a few events. And finally, a tournament that uses an auto shuffler will deal more hands per hour, so it should cash more quickly just like the six max uh, events do. To some extent, this can balance us the slower caching times for events with only a 12% caching structure, since these local events often use auto shufflers. So what conclusions can we make today? The T4 time is a simple and fairly accurate method to estimate how long it will take to reach the bubble in a World Series live event. In fact, it works well for all tournaments that pay 15% of the field. If we want a bit more accuracy, we can add some time for turbos and subtract them some time for one hour events. Or we can look at the Bravo clocks for local events that we want to play. Six handed events will pay, play more quickly than nine handed events, as will auto shuffled events. But other factors appear to have negligible effects on the bubble arrival times. We need to adjust our prediction for events that 
pay a smaller fraction of entrance than the 15% that the WSOP live events pays. And finally, we need to be careful about a tournament with an, uh, with an add-on since uh, an add-on makes determining the field's effective starting stack problematic. Add-ons should delay the bubble arrival, but the amount of delay depends on how many players buy the add-on and when they buy the add-on. Versions of this lecture were presented at the Las Vegas Wednesday Poker Discussion Group in early 2024. You can join us every Wednesday at Tommy Rockers, and you can join our Facebook group and see the agenda for our next meeting. I hope you enjoyed the show. That's all, folks.